49ers Report post-game show coming your way. I'm Chase Senior. This is the 49ers Report. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for watching the show here tonight. First, though, this show would not be possible if it was not for Rex MD, the number one leader in men's telehealth. You can see for yourself at rexmd.com slash chat. We'll tell you more about them coming up here in just a bit. So the San Francisco 49ers, ladies and gentlemen, are 3-0. and oh. And this game was a little bit muddy, a little bit ugly in the early going, but just like week two against the Rams, just like week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers, you saw two teams on two different planes. And San Francisco, with their overwhelming talent, each week of this year, in my opinion, has been able to really overpower the opposition in each of these matchups so far. Because when I watch San Francisco, so far this season, offense, defense, special teams, star power, coaching, all three phases of the game, San Francisco is the most complete and the best team in the NFL. And we had three different watch parties going on for Thursday Night Football. Mitchell Renz, host of the Raiders Report, after the game came in and said, the Niners are the best team in football. And I can imagine that a lot of people agree with that sentiment because they seem to just choke out the opponent throughout the course of a 60-minute ball game. You might be able to hang with the 49ers throughout the first quarter, throughout the first half, but as the game progresses, San Francisco 49ers are like a crocodile, right? Going after prey. Eventually, they're going to get the win, and they're just going to take you down by just will and strength and talent. And that's really the identity of this 49ers team. Now, as for this game in particular, what really stands out to me is just the difference between the two teams and the fact that the New York Giants did not belong on the same field as the San Francisco 49ers, especially after San Francisco made the second half adjustments and as the talent overall won out. And I say that because you look at the numbers here. 26 first downs for the Niners, 10 for the Giants, 13 passing first downs, 6 for the Giants. San Francisco able to pick up 9 rushing first downs, 2 for New York. And then you look further down. Total plays, 78 for San Francisco, 46 for New York. 441 yards for Kyle Shanahan's Niners, 150 for New York. Again, these are two different teams on two different trajectories here. And what's wild is that the Niners are able to have that great edge, 11 drives to 10 drives for New York, 300 passing yards for the Niners, 121 for the New York Giants. And then you continue to look down at this list, 141 rushing yards for San Francisco today, led by another great performance for Christian McCaffrey. Finally, we saw some more from Elijah Mitchell. Good job by Kyle Shanahan on a short week to mix up the running back rotation because McCaffrey being utilized like he's been is just not sustainable. But 141 rushing yards to 29. So when I talk about, you know, the Niners just being like a python and strangling their prey, a cheetah, running down their prey, that's kind of what stood out to me throughout the first three games. And you might be able to come up with an argument that another team can counter what San Francisco can do, but no team so far through three games, two plus for the other teams obviously, have been able to match up throughout four quarters with the San Francisco 49ers. We're going to go into some individual performances and overall thoughts for our post-game show. But first, as I said off the top, 49ers Report post-game show is sponsored by RexMD. You can get up to 90% off and only pay $2 per dosage at RexMD.com slash chat. Use that link and you can see for yourself. Fellas, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? Do you wish you could have a more fulfilling sex life? Well, you're not alone. That's why we're excited to tell you about RexMD, the online source for men's wellness. RexMD offers an easy and discreet way to get the medication you need for ED without having to visit a doctor's office. 
with just a few clicks, you can have your medication delivered straight to your door and at a fraction of the cost of traditional pharmacies. RexNV's team of licensed physicians will work with you to find the right treatment plan, and their medication is made right here in the USA, so you can trust its quality. Plus, their customer support team is available 24-7 to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. So, if you're ready to take control of your sex life and say goodbye to ED, head on over to rexmd.com slash chat, start your consultation today, and take advantage of their best deal they have ever offered exclusively for the faithful and save up to 90% off and only pay $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. That exclusive link, rexmd.com slash chat, limited time deal. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our listeners to get started. That's rexmd.com slash chat for up to 90% off. So let's start off at the quarterback position. You might look at Brock Purdy's numbers tonight, 25 of 37, 310 yards and two touchdowns. Those are really solid numbers. But I thought a couple of things were pretty notable tonight. After Brock Purdy missed a couple of throws early on, in, especially in that first drive, when Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Jawan Jennings, they kind of had to play defensive back, and that's never the position that you want to play as a wide receiver because of errant Brock Purdy throws. Kyle Shanahan realized that, and to his credit as a head coach, started to call a lot of lateral pass plays. And that showed a lack of trust in Brock Purdy tonight. Now, the New York Giants have one of the best defensive coordinators in the game, in Don Wink Martindale. So this could come down to coverage, and it's tough to tell if you don't take a look at the All-22. I'm reacting to this right after the game. But the Giants seem to cover the Niners downfield, and of course San Francisco, without Brandon Ayuk in this game. And that's why Kyle Shanahan adapted to that and throw laterally, and throw laterally to the line of scrimmage. Now... That could be a combination of coverage. It could be a combination of Kyle Shanahan understanding that Brock Purdy wasn't having his best game. After that first drive, I thought he got a little bit better, but there were multiple throws tonight in which Brock Purdy could have been intercepted. Again, the overall numbers look pretty good. 25, 37, 310 yards and two touchdowns. Once again, he threw for two tutties once more, and San Francisco was dominant in this game. But when you play... In two weeks, a team like the Dallas Cowboys, and you go up against a more stout defense, those challenges are going to be a little bit more difficult. Next week against Arizona, maybe not as much, but this is all about this season getting ready to win a Super Bowl. And when the playoff time comes around, Brock Purdy is going to be a little bit more crisp because last week he missed three deep shots to Juwan Jennings, Brandon Ayuk, as well as Demo Samuel. I thought the Niners' first drive stalled out a little bit. The Giants were pesky to begin this game. And again, that comes down to really good coaching and good scheme by New York. But again, that talent just overwhelming throughout the course of a game. Early on, I thought Steve Wilkes tried to set a tone with how he called the defense. He was very aggressive and blitzed more so than he has seemingly as compared to the first two games. And I think a reason for that, you knew Andrew Thomas was out. You knew that Giants offensive line was terrible. And Daniel Jones really struggles when the pocket gets a little bit muddied. So you cater to your defensive strengths, and you send in a lot of blitz packages and blitz calls, and that worked out well for San Francisco. The turning point of this game for the Niners for me, that third and 15 pop pass in which Brock Purdy took the snap, quick throw to Debo. You get those blockers out in front. Aaron Banks got to that second level. And when you move the chains there, that's backbreaking. For a team that probably understands that they're the inferior opponent, they're on the road, and that just takes the air out of the opposition on that other sideline. Because at that moment, close game, you convert a third and 15, you're like, oh, we had them, we had them bottled up. But all-pro Debo Samuel, who is looking like the all-pro from 2021, was able to pull off and reel off a classic Debo play in which he picked up yards after the catch thanks to the scheme, the blockers out in front, but his overall ability. And then later on that drive, that third and long to McCaffrey, also on a pass play, 
quick trigger screen, blockers out in front. That's two plays on the same drive in which New York is like, man, you know, we force them into a third and long, and they dice us up both times. If I'm on the opposing sideline, you know, the air is taken out of you to a certain degree. And in speaking of Christian McCaffrey, you know, he finds the end zone once again. That is 12 straight games for a touchdown for Christian McCaffrey. Longest streak in the NFL since 2021. It might even be 13 games. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section. He is a bona fide MVP candidate at this point. Leads the NFL in rushing going into week three. Obviously, it's an early week game, so we'll see what happens on Sunday and Monday. But Christian McCaffrey and the meaning that he has on this Niners offense is special. And you could tell there was a drastic difference between when he's on the field and Elijah Mitchell. As for Debo Samuel, there was all this chatter throughout training camp and in the preseason that he's slimmed down, that he's in better shape, that he admitted to having a failure of a season last year and said that he'll never put that on tape once again. He took that to heart. Kyle Shanahan has put his trust in Debo Samuel. And without Brandon Ayuk tonight, and I've continued to say, like, Ayuk is the number one wide receiver on this team. I look at Debo as a weapon. Tonight, Debo was fantastic. And Debo deserves a lot of credit for the game that he was able to have because he looked like the guy who was an All-Pro in 2021 and the guy that the Niners invested in. Six catches, 129 yards, and another touchdown. Back-to-back -back games with touchdowns for Debo. Niners defense, very good. I love the aggressiveness from Steve Wilkes. As I mentioned, within that defense, Tashawn Gibson made a couple of plays in which he came up to the line of scrimmage and was able to wreak some havoc. I thought that this was a very good night for George Kittle. I got asked a question during our live show earlier this week. Is Kittle a little bit banged up? Seven catches for 90 yards. So when you don't have to use him as a chip-in blocker, if Colton McKivitz is getting beat, you can put him in that pass game. And George Kittle, uh, Kittle, excuse me, looking like the same George Kittle that we've been accustomed to seeing for a really, really long time ever since he was drafted out of Iowa. Ronnie Bell on the board tonight. First career touchdown. Great throw by Brock Purdy. He knew the blitz was coming. New York was bringing the heat. Don Wink, Martindale dialed up that blitz. Purdy kind of backpedaled a little bit, put some touch on that football. Ronnie Bell, great ball, first of all. And then to get the two feet in was spectacular. The long touchdown to Debo Samuel was a great throw from Brock Purdy. And in week one, we saw that back shoulder ball to Ayuk that went 19 yards. The one tonight was 30-plus. And the anticipation... The timing, the accuracy, the ball placement there to Debo tonight was a very fine throw from Brock Purdy in this game. Uh, so those are really the notes that I have. You look at the defensive numbers here. Oren Burks, two tackles for loss. Nick Bosa, Javon Hargrave, tackles for loss. A big point of emphasis for me was getting a pressure on Daniel Jones tonight. Six quarterback hits for the Niners, and Nick Bosa finally on the board with his first sack of the year. He had a sack, a tackle for loss, and two quarterback hits. So he's been one of the highest graded players, according to Pro Football Focus. My prediction tonight was that Bosa was going to have two sacks, and Purdy was going to throw for two touchdowns. And I called a 34-20 Niners win. I said they were going to cover the 10 and a half. Checked out on all of that, but Bosa only one sack tonight. But you have to keep in mind that he can make an impact on the game despite those lack of sack numbers. And for Bosa, he gets double teamed so often. Make sure you subscribe to the show and sub for Niners Dubs. I also said right before we started breaking down our postgame show, any Super Chats that came in, we're going to feature those on the postgame show as well. So words of wisdom, $2 Super Chat. Steve, smoking the quack tonight. Congrats, Bo. Bro, if you don't tune into our watch parties, we did two 50-50 raffles. And Steve won both of them. It was electric. Romelio, $2. Dilly, Texas. Dilly, Dilly. Sia Zong, $10 donation. I'll be at the Arizona-Seattle games this year. Haters gonna hate. Go Purdy. Purdy's played good ball. I got a text from a hometown buddy, and he was like, 
Why do people believe that Purdy was good? I told him, first drive was not good. Then he made some good throws after that. The throw to Debo on the touchdown was great. The throw to Ronnie Bell, great touchdown placement on that ball. See ya. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Enjoy those games. Again, subscribe to the channel. We just got past 90,000 subscribers during our watch party tonight. We're less than 10K away from 100K. And when that happens, YouTube is sending us a plaque. Thank you.